Hello and welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. And I'm here to talk about the Black Panther Wakanda Forever movie. And just before I get into this, I would like to say that I think a lot of us appreciate what Ryan Coogler has done. This was not an easy task for him and for the writers of this movie. I think we can all agree. As we all know, Chadwick Boseman, he was so pivotal to that universe. He brought poise and regality to the role alongside his um, all-star cast for the first movie, Black Panther. And now in the follow-up, I think a lot of us can agree for those of us who watched that um, Ryan Coogler has done it yet again. So this will have spoilers if not yet watched it. Uh, kindly click away and then come back and watch this review. So we're just going to have a great talk about this. Um, of course, the movie starts off with the fact that the Black Panther is no longer amongst them. And the eyes of the world are on Wakanda and Angela Bassett's Ramonda, who has assumed the throne in the year since her son's passing, has done her best to maintain Wakanda's sovereignty. And because Wakanda remains rich in vibranium, other nations now are trying to close in and get their hands on that resource. So we have an amazing sequence in the beginning of the film as some soldiers attempt to steal some vibranium and the Dora Milaje come in and absolutely <laughs> wipe the floor with them. So I've got to say this by the way, the action sequences in this are just so fantastic fabulous um, the cinematography is so exceptional so yes we have that first scene of course with the Dora Milaje and it's all overlaid with Ramonda talking I think she's at some kind of meeting um, with some quote allies because I think it was some of them as well who are trying to get their hands on the vibranium so she has this amazing monologue where she says that even if the Black Panther is not amongst them, that Wakanda is more than capable of protecting themselves. So then the US government begins a vibranium tracking operation in the Atlantic Ocean and is mysteriously thwarted by an unknown power. So that's when we get the introduction to Namor and his own um, underwater world. He is, you know, their leader. And we have this amazing backstory that he gives us. So he is a mutant, by the way. I think he calls himself that as well. He has superhuman powers. He has heightened strength. Uh, he flies as well, thanks to the wings on his ankles. And he commands his nation as well. So, and of course, once again, Teno Shuerta as Namor, he did a fantastic job. In fact, um, just those who came with, you know, Namor's whole world, they did an absolutely amazing job they were menacing um the action that they were involved in was amazing and of course just the cherry on top was tenosh huerta as namor um he owned the role and you felt so much empathy for his character even in times where you didn't understand the extremes that he was willing to go to to protect his home from invaders you know, you could still empathize with the character um, and I would love to see more from them moving forward. And of course, as this movie is going on, I have a strong feeling that we will get to see more from Talo Khan and basically Namor and his underwater empire are totally not for this underwater digging for vibranium and that's what I think forces him to come to the surface. So basically the mining operation threatens to expose his oceanic utopia so he devises a plan. So he wants to take out the scientist genius who built the vibranium tracking device and that's when we get our introduction to Riri Williams who is Ironheart in the MCU. He tries to get Wakanda to take Riri out and of course Wakanda refuses she's I think according to the film she said she was 19 years old so that's when it all kind of kicks off um, the two find themselves at odds because of course Wakanda will not hand Riri over nor will they do his dirty work for him and he also by the way gives them an ultimatum that they that Wakanda and Talokan should align themselves against the surface world and of course Wakanda is not for this so that's where we get another amazing action sequence with Okoye who I mean Danai Gurera brings it all the time to that character um, she goes up against some of the warriors of Talokan and it is just a fantastic scene where in the end despite all her best efforts she 
does not win and Shuri and Riri are taken underwater because you know of course Shuri steps in and she demands to be or asks to be taken to their king so all through this movie by the way it's interwoven you know that grief Shuri she is trying to deal with the loss of her brother she is also trying at that time to you know regenerate the heart-shaped herb synthetically of course because we all know what Killmonger did in the first film so you know there's that um, and you know she's reluctant to pursue the whole mantle of the Black Panther thing she was just wanting to get the heart-shaped herb to save her brother not the mantle I think she says that as well so as they're underwater we get this whole backstory for Namor where we have that amazing sequence of how his people finally got to be underwater and how you know he is the first one born there and he's a mutant and we just get this amazing backstory of how um, you know he sees the enslavement of the people who are left on the surface world and oh my gosh so touching and it does make them quite sympathetic and I knew the whole time even going into this movie that he wasn't gonna be a straight out villain and Ryan Coogler oh, he balances it so well so much empathy for the underwater world and by the way when they take us there it is just so authentic i was trying to think the whole time between that and aquaman i was trying to think which world was you know was better <laughs> you know i had that thought and you know the when you think about what they did with the underwater world in you know dc what they did on the screen it was so full of light and you know all the colors of the underwater deep under the ocean and there was an element of that in this but it felt more organic the whole aesthetic of it was so pleasing so hats off as well to the designers uh, who work on all that I think that's Hannah Beekler uh, who is the production designer they made um, Namor's aquatic world so real and so tangible and of course threaded through were striking indigenous details um, they pulled a lot from Mayan folklore as well and the whole design was amazing also by the way hats off to Ruth Carter who is I think the costume designer for the film great work um, so basically you find out that Namor is covered in vibranium and they have it too so Wakanda cannot risk an all-out war with someone who is equipped with the same weapons that they have so in all this the queen is just so upset I've just got to say once again what Angela Bassett did with that character I was just so moved seeing all their performances um, and then she has that talk with Okoye where she says that she she's given everything and you know she tells Okoye that she can no longer lead uh, the Dora Milaje and that was just such a scene I'm telling you I teared up in moments in this movie it was just so so touching so we have that scene where Okoye is begging literally begging uh, not to be removed from her post but no the queen refuses even against her own elders who are just basically saying that perhaps she's being a bit too harsh at that time and in the end, um, she goes to see Nakia and tells her to go and retrieve Shuri from the underwater world. So there we have that sequence where Shuri, you know, she goes there. And of course, Lupita Nyong'o, I loved her performance and how she just has a mastery of Spanish. She, she's just absolutely fluent in it as well. She speaks that as well. And she, she did marvelously on that Marvel movie. Oh, the puns. So yeah, she goes underwater. And in an amazing sequence, she retrieves Shuri and Riri. Um, she's just so, so uh, bold. And the way she just takes out those guards who are underwater, it's just amazing. She was just so, I, I mean, I have to say cutthroat in the way she dealt with them. My gosh. Once again, Ryan Coogler coming through the action. So when they get to the surface world, um, now, of course, uh, you know, Talakan, they have been summoned to war. It's all at war. And we have this whole sequence where... Shuri with a piece of you know jewelry that she was given which had some herb that was grown in vibranium rich soil she finds a way to synthesize another heart-shaped herb and then she takes it there's this moment where she goes under and then I did not know this we get to see Killmonger back there he is it was so amazing to see his character back I did not know he was gonna be in this and I'm so happy that I did not get that spoiler and I love the talk that Shuri has with him and then you know Jadaka tells her that she is not like T'Challa she's not noble like him and they have this talk it was just so deep where he 
kind of just points her in the direction of revenge because he, he can see that she's seething with it. What a talk they had. He talks about her statement about her wanting the world to burn and he tells her to get stuff done and then she comes out of that whole sequence and she doesn't tell the people around her what she's seen but we get to see that she has powers in that moment where she knocks back a setups that are holding one of the Dora Milaje outfits. So we get to see that she has powers and then there's that emotional sequence where she is like introduced as the Black Panther. What a moment. The whole orchestra of it and the mood of it and how there's just a swell of emotion as she assumes the mantle and the leadership of her nation. And I've got to say that I I personally love Letitia Wright and I was so happy to see her in that role. And I know I on this channel talked about the recast T'Challa movement and I and there's a part of me that, you know, still holds on to that, but I still am so happy for my sister Letitia to have that opportunity just seeing her there as a black woman owning that moment it was just so amazing I'm telling you I cried tears of joy it was just such an emotional moment um Letitia she gave her 110 percent to her role I felt every moment when she was on screen talking about what she's gone through and of course with all of the conflict and how she lost her mother, the queen, on top of everything as well, on top of T'Challa, it was just so wonderful seeing her performance. So hats off to her as well. So they have this war out in the Atlantic, amazing sequence, and you know they find out a way to basically weaken Namor. And it works, by the way, he, he needs water, and they find a way just to drain it of him. And then they have that whole sequence where they are off on their own on the land as the amazing boat sequence is taking place as well and that too was amazing it was so striking and there were moments in the movie where you just you know you were just taking it all in especially in that fight uh where now shuri was going up one on one with namor and i love the fact that the execution of, of it was that she actually lost which i think is more believable because she doesn't have much of the whole combat background she, you know, she relied more on her tech. I think we've all seen that throughout the film. So he puts the spear through her and he's trying to struggle to get back to the water. And she somehow, um, you know, jumps out in front of him. So using, I think, one of her beads, she controls the ship and explodes it on Namor. And as she's just going in for the kill shot, she has this moment where she is about to take revenge. And all of those moments just start to play back to her. Um, understanding that this would lead to all-out war and she has as I said empathy for these people they are so humanized and in the end she sees her mom Ramonda saying show them who you are and she chooses to show mercy and then just an amazing moment as we see them getting back to the place where all the conflict is taking place and they are united in that moment because of course before Namor yields he chooses peace and it was I think a whole chess game for him in a way because now he even in the end of the movie he talks about how they will be now allies so I you know I think there's a lot to unpack there as well so what an amazing movie I could go on and on it was just amazing performances all around Wakanda Forever is a great film are we saying it's a perfect film I was not totally in agreement with what happened to Ramonda, but I understand that it furthered the plot and character development of Shuri. So, yes. And of course, as I said before, I was still somewhat holding on to the whole recast T'Challa, but we know how the movie ends. Apparently, Nakia is or had a child with T'Challa and the child also has a name T'Challa. And you know, the reasoning they gave is that they took him away from Wakanda and gave him a time just away from the pressures of having to assume the throne. So that's an interesting narrative uh, as to how that will unfold, let's hope. But I've got to say one thing, it was a great movie. It was dealing with a lot, um, a lot of vulnerability. And as I said before, the whole interwoven theme and thread of grief, of course, getting insight into Mayan culture. And of course, the culture of Wakanda, which as we've all known, it pulls from actual African culture and it's infused in this fictional nation. So it was wonderful and I enjoyed it and it has tremendous rewatchability and as we've seen on 
the box office charts uh, Wakanda Forever is already over 500 million well on its way to a billion dollars so um, I think a lot of us enjoyed the movie it was just fantastic and also by the way I've got to also talk about Everett Ross it was a delight to see his character back on screen and I loved the fact that he was more aligned with Wakanda I believe other iterations of this character have had him be so you know basically underhanded and someone who is untrustworthy but I think I love how he is interpreted for the MCU I loved how he was just feeding information back to the Wakandans and you know now how it ended up with him being rescued by Okoye I want to see more of him in Wakanda I think that's going to be fascinating as well so these are just my thoughts and as I said I could just go on and on uh, and I want to know yours in the comment section below let me know what stood out to you in this movie in the comment section below so thank you all for watching my review of Black Panther Wakanda Forever and thank you once more to those who support this channel financially a special shout out right now to you Lydia Washington one of the channel moderators here on this channel I want to say thank you thank you to you right now Bunny who also supports this channel longtime supporter I want to say thank you and thank you to you James Calvin Daniels I appreciate you for your support throughout all these years Thank you once again to all who like, comment, and share. And once again, leave your thoughts on Wakanda Forever in the comment section below. Thank you all for watching and I will catch you in the next one. Have a blessed.